What's up everybody, it's me, Couch Mills here, and today we got a breakdown a ton of crazy things that have been happening in Valorant. First off, we got replays confirmation, the youngest player ever to get rank one, team deathmatch, the eternal rank, and some interesting changes to the rank system. There's a lot we gotta break down and talk about, but there's never been a better time to reach your absolute peak in Valorant. In-depth guides, pro breakdowns, and more are just a click away, so if you want to climb as quickly as possible, what are you waiting for? Go check out the Game Leap website right now in the links down below. Now, I've been begging. I've been freaking begging for a replay system for I don't know how long. Y'all have heard it on this channel where I've probably just complained about it nonstop to the point where I, uh, you know, kind of gave up hope a little bit. However... We got some confirmation from a Riot employee that said this. Hi, I wanted to share that we have much more in development than what we talked about in the kickoff video. Lots of things, things like replays and new server locations and mode updates. Now, if you remember, Riot got a lot of flack for basically putting replays on the back burner previously in the past. And like the community had a lot of outrage and they were like, whoa, 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 we're still working on it. It's not completely on the back burner. And uh, maybe they sped things up a little bit. I don't know. All I know is if you're going to make your entire game about esports, you're going to put in a path the pro system in game and a tournament system in game, and you're going to make everyone want to try their best to improve, and you don't have a freaking replay system when the casualest game on the market, Overwatch, has like an amazing replay system. What are you doing? Okay, <laughs> that's, that's all I got to say. And I'm really happy that it's coming down the pipeline. Now, next up, we got to talk about the youngest player that has hit rank one in the world. A 14-year-old actually hit rank one in the world, which is just insane. Like, this is not just a player that's good. This is a player that's phenomenal on ladder. And I say it's only a matter of time. Like, this player or players like him can't actually compete right now in tier two or tier one in Valorant, right? Because there's an age restriction, so a lot of these players can't play. However, when these players start entering the pro scene, you're gonna see a second wave in Valorant specifically of pro players. And a lot of the best players that are gonna be known as like the best players in the world at Valorant haven't even made a name for themselves yet. And we know this because we've seen it in just about any game that has blown up. There's always the first wave of players that are typically from former games and have some amazing skills. And some of those rise to cream of the crop and a lot of those stick around. However, just like games like Fortnite, games like Apex, even Overwatch competitive, every single competitive game, there's always a second wave that happens later on filled of crazy new talent. And these players just lived and breathed the game. They're born in the game and they just are insane. And I'm excited. I'm really excited for what pro Valor has to offer. And uh, I can't wait until there's like a freaking random cracked player that uh, puts all the current pros to shame. But uh, that might be some years off. Next up, we got to talk about Team Deathmatch because we're actually getting some. Team Deathmatch is actually coming to Valorant. And it's going to be another mode that's going to be right alongside Swift Play, which I've personally been really liking Swift Play, as a lot of y'all have as well. And Team Deathmatch seems really, really cool and interesting. I don't know exactly how they're going to make it the most balanced. Is it just going to be like players come out and just keep fighting and keep killing? How are they going to make the spawns like proper? I have no idea, but I have said a lot that Valorant just feels like a game that's a little bit too hollow, doesn't have enough content, and the new Swift play definitely helps with that. Having a new team deathmatch mode is something that I'm super excited, and uh, I'm curious what other game modes that Riot could release. I think it'd be cool to have a competitive mode that is not ranked, just like maybe like a sub-competitive mode, but you let me know what kind of modes you want to see in Valorant and why down below. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about is the Eternal rank, which is pretty freaking trippy that this was a real rank. Valor Leaks tweeted this out, said, before Valor released, Radiant was called Valor, and we all know that, but which was changed due to confusion, and there was another rank that was called Eternal, and it looked like this. It just looks completely trippy as hell. Now, this isn't releasing or anything like that, but it does make me wonder if they're going to like repurpose this design at all. I mean, I like this design. I think it looks pretty cool and I would like to see it maybe in a cosmetic or something like that. But the next thing that we need to talk about is new guns coming to Valorant. And we've broken down this story a long time ago and Riot did confirm that they were willing and wanted to introduce new guns to Valorant, but that was almost two years ago at this point. And it's been so long, we've gotten no additional weapons in the game. 
And there was a lot of controversy as far as adding new weapons. I remember one of the ones that they actually did create and then shelf was a fully automatic sniper rifle, which everyone was like, what the freak? Like, just don't make any new weapons if you're gonna start dreaming about things like that. And while I think that having new weapons in the game would be really cool, I can see that from Riot's point of view, it's probably pretty risky to introduce a new weapon in the game. Like, it definitely would be hype and it would mix things up, but that's kind of the problem when you're about to release the tournament system, you're in the middle of starting franchising, if you add a new weapon or a new handful of weapons into the mix, it could really mess with balancing. Like weapon balance can change a lot, especially if the weapon is actually good enough to make a mark, which you would want it to do because why else even make it if it's just gonna be like a really trash weapon that no one uses, then it's like it doesn't even exist. But I think that at some point, Riot will pull that lever. It's only a matter of when, and I'm thinking it's going to be quite some time from now. I think that maybe, maybe like two years from now, we'll probably see the first gun. I could be wrong and they could just like randomly surprise release the gun out of nowhere. I'm actually surprised they haven't done some bigger changes as far as the cosmetics are concerned. There was rumors quite a while back that there was going to be some ability changes or some ability animations that you could buy and things like that. We never got to see that. So uh, yeah, a couple of things that Riot has talked about in the past or rumors that have been out that still haven't come to fruition and we're two years later. So definitely makes me wonder if a lot of those things have been completely benched or if Riot's gonna whip them out whenever they see fit. Now that being said, if you could bring one weapon from any game and put it into Valorant, what would it be and why? Let me know down below. Last story that we gotta talk to you about is a really interesting one. It's by Riot Dev Evermore and he talks about some slight changes that went through to the rank system. So he said this, before the change in this new episode, the round differential could swing plus minus 10 RR. The change was made to reduce this by half, so while round differential is still essential, it's not so harsh. Our other change requires less games to reach rank MMR. He goes on and says, this change is kind of complicated. The best way to think about this, if your MMR is not lined up with your rank, like seeing a plat in your match and your gold, then you should have an easier time climbing and you'll be rewarded more RR when you pop off. So in these games, don't feel like it's a bad thing. It's a chance for you to actually gain more RR if you win. And even if you lose, you're not gonna be punished as bad. Overall, you're gonna have a much easier time climbing because the system says that you deserve a higher rank. It's gonna try to get you there faster so that it's less overall games for your rank to match your MMR, which is always the goal. And then from there, you're gonna have to win out to get your MMR pushed even higher. And it just goes back and forth. Honestly, I feel like Riot has pulled itself out of the lull time and I'm excited about the game again, but you definitely let me know what big feature you think Riot actually needs for Valorant. And uh, are you hyped to play the game or watch the game? Let me know down below. Definitely check out the Game Leap website if you wanna become absolutely cracked. And I'll see you next time.